to episode number three from chapter one. And in this episode, we're going to cover a couple of different topics. The first one is, what is the scientific mindset? Right? The scientific mindset is basically the attitude that you need to have to be a really good scientist. And I want you to remember this mnemonic um, acronym, C-S-C. Curiosity, the number one thing a scientist has to have. They've got to be really uh, curious. They want to know, why did this happen? What causes it to happen? When's it going to do it again? If you're not curious, you're going to be a terrible scientist. Second thing you need is skepticism. Now, I'm a big fan of uh, watching Finding Bigfoot on uh, Animal Planet. And the thing about that show that just fascinated me... Is that you? Is that those knuckleheads a squatch, a, do not follow the scientific method a lick, and they're not the least bit skeptical because they think anything that somebody says is a Sasquatch, they heard it, they smelt, they smelled it, they saw it, then they definitely saw it. So they're not skeptical at all. In other words, they're not really looking for real data. They just take people's word on it, and that's terrible terrible science right and then the third and final thing that a scientist needs is creativity you've got to be able to create these wonderful experiments that collect all this great data to help support your hypothesis so creativity allows you to create these very elegant simple and um, definitive experiments to collect data finding bigfoot stuff just cracks me up can't wait for that new season to start <clears throat> all right so what is a theory? Um, if you see up here in orange, this is the one that I've created, and this is the one that I use a lot in my own classroom. It's essentially a hypothesis with lots and lots of supporting um, evidence. Now, remember, a hypothesis is a possible answer to a scientific question. Right? And you're going to collect evidence to support your hypothesis, and that evidence is called data or data. However you pronounce it, it don't matter. Oh. Now, if you have a lot and lot of evidence or data to su support your hypothesis, then you may call it a theory. Now, your book definition, and this is the one that you want to pay attention to um, for tests and quizzes and whatnot, because this is what's going to show up. It's a well-tested explanation. So, in other words, it's a hypothesis that's been experimented upon a lot, and it has a ton of data to support it. Right. So it's a well-tested explanation that unifies a broad range of observation and hypothesis and enables the scientists to make accurate predictions about situations. Great definition. Too many words for my taste. That's why I like this one up here. All right. Basically, it's a hypothesis with a ton, a ton of evidence to support it. Now, remember, a theory is not a law. Uh, one of the beauties of science is that if you come across new evidence, remember, evidence means data, that if you come across new evidence, you can throw away the theory, create a new one, or you can change the theory so that it fits the new evidence. And so I love the fact that science is continually changing and evolving by looking at new evidence. you got to have the evidence to support whatever you're going to have in there. Now, one of the things that, as a scientist, you want to look out for is bias. And this is really hard to do because it's part of the human condition that you're going to have a bias. Right? I'm a human being. I have certain biases. A really good scientist tries to remove bias from how that person is going to interpret the data. Now, let's go back to finding Bigfoot. Okay, um, Those gentlemen and that lady who's a little bit skeptical, but not much, um, but especially the guys, their bias is they want to find a Bigfoot so bad that they're inclined to believe what anybody says about their uh, experiences with seeing or hearing a Bigfoot. So if you ever watch the show, they're really not that skeptical about any kind of evidence because their bias is, is basically blinding them to what the data shows, right? I watch this show all the time. They don't find any evidence that would be supported by peer review for the presence of a Sasquatch. But that's why I love the show, because it's so ridiculous. All right? Okay, so what is biology? You're in a biology class. We better define what it is. We had a previous episode defining what science is. Now let's look at the particular science that we're going to deal with this year, and it's called biology. Right? Uh, bio is a word. That means life. And logi 
means the study of. It's essentially the study of life. And that should be a duh. All right, you should have heard this before. Now, biology is a very broad science. It covers lots of different things. Uh, if you become a biologist in the future, you're going to look at some of these more uh, concentrated areas. And I have a list of some of them here. This is pronounced zoology. It's not zoology, but zoology. What do we put in zoos? Animals. So this is the study of animals. Botany is the study of plants. Uh, I think plants are cool. They're so different than animals. Um, I wish we had a botany class at our school, but sadly we do not. All right, biochemistry, one of the coolest things of science. Bio means life. Chemistry means chemistry. So this is the study of life's chemistry. And we're going to spend a lot on this because this will be chapter two. And that will be our next set of uh, episodes when we get to our next uh, series. And basically, chemistry is how everything in your life happens, all right? So everything in a living body is caused by chemistry. And then one of the neat ones is paleontology, study of ancient life, which, of course, would be dinosaurs, all right? We're going to end this episode right here. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side. <laughs>